Hello and welcome to our demonstration of MPSI ultra-fast stochastic inversion. MPSI allows the generation of both deterministic and stochastic inversion of seismic data. Deterministic inversions make a fantastic first pass for examining a seismic data set. They are fast and allow you to identify sand-rich areas that would make good potential reservoirs for further investigation. Deterministic inversions, however, produce a smoothed average which minimizes the misfit of the model with the data, a process which underestimates the net sand above the oil-water contact, shown in blue, compared to well estimates in green. The smoothing involved with deterministic inversion also leads to an overestimate of connectivity in purple compared to a model in blue. This is where stochastic inversions are in their element. They produce actual possible realizations of the data based on a user-defined error grid and a 3D anisotropic variogram that show the possible variability or uncertainty in our deterministic inversion. Taking an average of many stochastic inversions in red much more accurately determines net pay compared to well logs, the green circle. Stochastic inversions also make a much better estimate of connectivity, in yellow, compared to a model, in blue. Performing many stochastic inversions also allows the generation of probability volumes, showing the chances of finding sand at a given location and connectivity volumes showing the chances of two parts of a reservoir being connected. These volumes allow a modeler to draw robust conclusions and know exactly what the certainty of his conclusions are, massively reducing exploration risk. This image shows a highly inaccurate sand map from a deterministic inversion, whereas this one shows a much better stochastic inversion map, allowing interpretation of sedimentary features connectivity, and good drill locations. This makes stochastic inversion one of the most powerful reservoir modeling tools on the market. But because 150 plus inversions are needed for a reliable study, and previously this has been a very slow, costly process, it has not been widely adopted. MPSI ultra-fast stochastic inversion resolves this sole drawback by using an extremely efficient fast Fourier transform-based simulation method that allows rapid and routine calculation of 150 plus inversions for an extremely thorough modeling study, reducing time, computing requirements, and cost. This makes MPSI ultra-fast stochastic inversion an exceptionally powerful tool, which is a must-have in any reservoir modeling workflow. To demonstrate MPSI, we must first build a 3D model to simulate low frequency amplitudes using the well log data, to do this, go to the Analysis drop-down menu and select Attributes. Then choose Earthworks and ArcCLS, and then EW3D Model Builder. First, we must specify which wells we want to include, which logs we want to use, the p-impedance log in this case, and how the XY location of deviated wells will be found at each depth. Here, we will treat all wells as vertical within each zone. Next, we'll define a zone in which the 3D model we are creating applies. This requires two previously picked seismic horizons. For the top zone, we choose the top of the model to define the top, and a horizon to define the bottom. We will then define the spatial correlation of our data by defining the type of curb that we fit to our data, and the horizontal and vertical ranges of our variogram. Note that MPSI allows for directional variograms. We will now repeat the same procedure for the two other zones in our model. For the central zone, we choose two horizons, one for the top and one for the base of the zone. We also need to choose the number of data points over which to smooth our low frequency model. We'll choose 11, to be sure that we're not overfitting our data. We can then name and output this model. This concept is how we design our 2D error grid, showing our confidence in the values predicted by our model. Again, going to Analysis, Attributes, then Earthworks and ArcCLS, but this time choosing EW2D error grid, 
we then need to select our previously built 3D model and define a range. Please note that this workflow has to be carried out in this order. Here we can see the standard deviation of our model, low in red, high in blue. Low standard deviations focus around our well logs. If we increase the range of our error grid, i.e. the range over which we think our model values should relate to our well log values, the low standard deviation bullseyes get larger. We will now perform our deterministic inversion going to Analysis, Attributes, Earthworks and ArcCLS, then EW deterministic inversion. Choosing the 3D model and 2D error grid we made earlier and our seismic volume. At this point we need to include an estimated wavelet of the seismic. We can specify several other parameters including the extent to which our deterministic inversion should follow well data at short and far distances from well logs. To perform the deterministic inversion press perform pre-processing. This usually takes a couple of minutes and will output an impedance volume that minimizes least squares misfit with our input data cube and well logs. Next we will compute five stochastic realizations using the 3D model, 2D error grid and deterministic inversions we've already generated, the original seismic and some additional input parameters that define the normal score transform. The first stochastic inversion can be seen here. Note how it seems to pick out finer detail than the deterministic inversion because it's an actual realization rather than a smoothed average of the possible input. We can also display the other stochastic inversion realizations we've generated in order to examine where the uncertainty in our model lies. To do this, we go to Analysis, Attributes, then press the Evaluate Attributes button. We then choose the number of realizations we generated and can move the slider to toggle between them. Given a number of stochastic realizations, we could calculate a mean impedance cube, though this would simply approximate the deterministic inversion. Much more usefully, we can compute a standard deviation cube, which shows the uncertainty in our deterministic prediction. To do this, go to Analysis, Attributes, EW Utilities, and then select STD cube. Choose the stochastic inversion we performed earlier and highlight all of the realizations before computing the STD cube. Note that the standard deviation of impedance is considerably higher away from our well constraints because there is much more uncertainty in the underlying 3D model. Perhaps even more usefully, we can now calculate a probability cube showing the chances of finding a given impedance value at a particular location in the volume. Go to Analysis, then Attributes, then EW Utilities again, but this time choose Probability under Parameters. Enter an impedance range that interests you. This cube shows the likelihood that a point is in the specified impedance range, such as that of an oil-filled sand, and can be extremely useful for connectivity and reservoir modelling studies. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this presentation, and if you'd like more information on this or any of our other products, please email us or check out our website.